Hey, welcome back everyone. Um, today, the tutorial is gonna be quite technical. I'm gonna show you how to do a sticky header. And by sticky header, what I mean is, you can see I have this uh, dummy mockup I just did in a few minutes. In this case, Green Drop is a brand which I created from scratch uh, for, you know, for tutorials like these. Um, but what I wanna achieve is, let's say you see this menu on the top, which is like a header right now and it's highlighted if let's say I scroll down the website or the portal that that menu would be sticky and would um, just appear animate in as a header and that would be present let's say on mobile devices desktop devices you name it and I think Axure is one of the best ways to do so you know other tools do it but don't really do it well because it doesn't have that muscle the Axure actually packs so let's dive right into it and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Now, first and foremost, you need some sort of design, you know. Um, I started with this one. I have a few other screens which I'm going to use in other lessons. So I'm going to jump in and just copy as much of the design to our action as possible. As you can see, I have all my elements for a static uh, header. And all we need to do now is just to add the capability to make it sticky header. Now the easiest way to do so, and I'm gonna cover a bit harder as well, is to design a sticky header separately and just animate in when the user scrolls down. And how you do that is simply I would go to sketch and I would just probably copy all those elements I had in the top header Align it pretty, you know, similarly of, of what, what I have here. Might also pick that home indicator that the home is clicked in. And what I would want to do is just simply add a background to it. So let's say I might add a shape rectangle in sketch, or you can even do it in Axure if you feel confident. And I'm just gonna place it underneath all the content I have. Ideally, you would want to give it color uh, let me just center those bad boys vertically. So the color of it could be something darker maybe, or maybe even use that green, like this. Inverting everything else with white, let's say. So even the logo, if your branding allows, why not to make it white too? As you can see, everything is shaped here, so it's quite easy to do so. Boom, and I have my sticky header and how it could look like. I would use a plugin to copy the selection and just place that sticky item inside and probably just over the actual design. Now, it might not align well, but I think it should. I think we just made it a little bit bigger than we need to. All the items are grouped, so I can just create a dynamic panel out of it and name it a sticky header, let's say. As you remember, I like to do a special character, so know what items to animate and which ones should just be kept static. So sticky header. And I would probably want to hide it. So let's say when you load the page, just like this, you don't really see it, but it also doesn't really work as you can see. Well, let me just go back to it. And what we wanna do really is just make a condition that when the user scrolls down, we show it. If they scroll up, we hide it. So there are two different statements and how we do the conditions and what sort of instance I would attach it to is probably to that page itself, to the canvas itself. So let's say if nothing you have selected on canvas and you go to interactions, you can just add new interaction and you can say on window scroll, let's say, scroll down, show hide. So we can say show uh, sticky header, our sticky header. Again, show is, is, is already selected. We can animate it in, which I like to slide down, let's say, and do it quickly, so 200 ms. I also like to bring to front, just in case if I design something later and some layers are on top, the sticky header might just you know appear underneath and there would be a clash and it would look glitchy. So it, it might be a good idea to bring to front all the items which should be in front, doesn't matter what, like the sticky header. 
So I go like that and let's test it out. You can see a preview. I'm just going to disable the header. Boom, it appears, but it's not sticky. It just stays on top. Well, the only reason why it doesn't appear on top and, and become sticky is because we didn't tell it to. So what you can do is there is such functionality under style tab, which is called pin to browser and you can assign almost every element like that. So I would just select pin to browser here. And if you enable that, you can then select where exactly you want it to be pinned. And I'm going to pin it horizontally in the center, maybe, well, maybe left and probably vertically the top because we want to stay at the top. And as you can see, we're keeping it in front for browsers. And now if we test it and I scroll down, boom, we've got ourselves a sticky header. What we want to do is actually on, let's say, scroll up, we want to hide it. So that's another statement we're missing. I would just select on scroll up and I would just, let's say, hide the sticky header by selecting this selection and no animation because it would be instant. And if we preview, that should in theory work. So we have our sticky header appear and then disappear. So that's the easiest way to make the sticky header happen. The, the only issue I see with this is that you have the duplicate. So you always have too many to take care of if you make any changes based on user feedback, let's say, or stakeholder feedback. So what you can actually do, you can skip the addition of secondary menu and try to manipulate what you already have. Um, just to show you how it could look like, for example, if I just delete this sticky header, I would be left with our, you know, the typical menu. You see, you still would want to make it a dynamic panel, all of it. So I would select that header item. I would right click on it. I would create dynamic panel and I would just name it universal header, let's say. Now, what I would want to do is to already add the background of what would happen. Let's say if you scroll down, so I would just drag an object, position it there, let's say where we want it to be, something like this. Again, you know, if you have time, make the cosmetic changes yourself if you experiment and boom, now we have that header background. I would probably make it really quickly, some sort of different color, green or not, it doesn't matter. Let's make it, let's say black. So since I colored my background, now I'm ready to animate it as much as. As you can see, our header is not perfect. So I want to maybe increase it a little bit, maybe modify the, you know, the layout of it, go inside it a little bit like this maybe. And now if we go back, as you can see, I have a, the dynamic panel. I would want to make the dynamic panel, first of all, sticky. So pin to browser again, left, let's say top, keep in front. And if I preview it, from get go, it's sticky already. So I didn't even have to do anything. Apart from the deviation here is that in the original design, we didn't have a background to the header. The, the background is added only on scroll. So that's all we really need to do is to just go inside the dynamic panel, hide that background by default, only make the background appear on scroll down. So what I'm gonna do next is just add new interactions. For example, what happens on scroll down, which then I want just to show that background because everything else already is sticky. Let's say make it fade maybe. And then another interaction on scroll up, we just want to hide that background. Hide none. So now if we test it, as you can see by default, we have a header. If we scroll down, the background appears. If we scroll, scroll up, the background disappears. So this is a bit more advanced version. Now we have two different ways to do the sticky header. Um, it's really up to you to decide which one you want to go, how complex you want your designs to be and prototypes to be. I find it that it really depends. The first way allows you more flexibility because you can add more items and deviations from one state to the other. The second one is, however, a bit more change proof. So let's say after user testing, you might require to change it totally or add new links. And then you, instead of duplicating work, you can just do one change. 
So it's up to you as a designer to make a decision which way to go, but both are quite right. I hope this helped you. Give it a like, subscribe to this channel, and really appreciate your support and feedback. If you have any comments, leave them down below. Uh, I read all of them and try to respond to all of them. So stay tuned for other videos and see you next time.